Hello, my name is Carl Irwin, and this is a uh, quick follow-up on the uh, OpenGL lens flare uh, concept that I uh, posted uh, not too long ago. Um, I have a couple of new concepts that I just wanted to share with you, and uh, also uh, to make you aware that I'm going to put uh, the simple uh, image library that I've been putting together, some of these images that I've uh, been uh, creating and putting together for these lens flares, I'm going to put them into a zip file or a zip folder and uh, I'm going to uh, place that on my website and make that available to uh, anybody that wants to check it out along with a couple of these uh, test files that you can uh, deconstruct and uh, uh, take a, a look at and uh, maybe uh, put, put into use for yourselves. Uh, so uh, first of all let's take a look at uh, some of the new ideas that I've, I've come up with here. Uh, and these are by no means exhaustive ideas. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can composite these uh, OpenGL type lens flare um, effects. Uh, but these are just some new ideas in terms of rigging uh, that you might want to experiment with. I have a, a flare put together um, and again I'm not going to go through how to do that from start to finish. Uh, you can check my tutorial on my uh, YouTube uh, uh, channel uh, decaf productions you can check that out on there uh, and uh, follow along how this works um, but I just want to show you a couple of uh, newer uh, ideas that are not in that original tutorial so I have my uh, uh, flare empty and I have my multiple scenes and each scene has uh, different elements uh, tied to it that I'm using in the final composite in the video sequence editor and uh, one of the main uh, new ideas that I've come up with is this one right here, which is the caustic. And this is a uh, caustic image, it's supposed to look like one, uh, that I created uh, using GIMP. I put together this image using some very basic shapes and blurring techniques and adding techniques and multiply techniques and ended up coming up with uh, an image that looks like this. And um, I have a couple of others that I made too. Um, in fact, I can show you very quickly some of these other images that I have. Uh, for example, here's uh, the one that I'm using uh, in this project. Here's another one. There's another one over here. So what I did is I just looked at some other caustic images, some real ones uh, that I found online and looking at some other libraries. And I just uh, tried to emulate what those look like. So these are not real. These are all uh, made up and I uh, just created them uh, in GIMP and uh, you can see here this is the library that I'm going to post. It's not very big but it does have a few of these very basic shapes that I've worked on, a few elements that I even made uh, using um, uh, real practical uh, uh, devices and elements uh, using pieces of glass and marble and things like that and uh, shining lights through them. Uh, but these are just the basic, uh, basic library elements that I've created and put together. You can of course expand on this and there's a limit, uh, unlimited uh, number of uh, elements that you can create in order to uh, create these uh, lens flare effects. Um, but anyway, this uh, caustic idea here is that you take this image plane and you import it and then you apply to it a uh, constraint that causes it to track to a center empty and I place this empty in the center of my scene and this is stationary it doesn't move uh, and I parented my caustic image to my flare empty which is this right here and a as the flare empty moves around the scene this caustic image will track to the central empty and it causes it to always face uh, away from the center or towards uh, the lens uh, flare that rather the uh, um, uh, light source uh, empty that I have in here. So this was kind of just a, a clever idea that I, I came up with after looking at uh, some other proprietary uh, lens flare uh, um, plugins such as uh, I know one is uh, the video copilot after uh, for, for uh, video copilot optical flares for After Effects. There's a very similar kind of thing uh, where you can import real uh, pictures or images and you could use real images I suppose if you made some uh, images yourself uh, from real elements. Uh, import them in and then uh, set uh, constraints so that it uh, always faces in the proper direction. Anyway so this was the idea that I came up with and uh, you can see here uh, that in the uh, in the final composite what I did is I took that image and I flipped it so that it's on the opposite corner from the uh, lens flare source and there it's composited in. So uh, that's one idea that I came up with uh, and I tried to apply this also to some other elements. I have another one on here that's a uh, hoop type element 
This is just a, a, a rainbow type gradient hoop and it same kind of idea is that it is uh, parented to the light source but uh, it tracks to the central point so as the uh, light source moves around the screen you can see that uh, that hoop will track it will actually disappear once it comes center uh, to the center uh, it, it uh, you're looking at it on the uh, lengthwise so you can't see the hoop anymore uh, and then uh, what I did is I took this hoop and I composited it against uh, another element that I have in here, uh, which looks like this. And this hoop will, uh, in the video sequence editor, uh, uh, by using the multiply function, will multiply against this glimmery kind of shining image. And it creates, uh, it's another way of creating that, uh, um, I don't know, that... Uh, light rays kind of effect that comes away from the uh, uh, light source so it's a little bit different kind of animation that goes along with it just a little bit more interesting and I'm not uh, suggesting that this is realistic in any way or that the motion is uh, it emulates a, a real lens flare uh, but I do uh, suggest that it does look real enough uh, in fact if you look at the uh, final uh, render here you can see here's this uh, hoop and it you know it adds somewhat of a a realistic uh, looking kind of flare effect uh, whether or not it's absolutely real uh, or not so I uh, just I wanted to share that with you and uh, this is a, a project that I'll, I'll put in the uh, zip folder on my website uh, you can see also a, 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 a follower subject uh, suggested to me that I uh, use this function in the uh, strip selection here uh, make meta strip to consolidate some of these uh, strips as I'm compositing and I found this to be very useful in terms of keeping the uh, video sequence editor clean. Uh, one thing you can do is add a color um, uh, so add a color, a uh, black color on the very bottom and then put several uh, strips together and then make a meta strip and then apply that uh, meta strip uh, with an add uh, or, or cross or something like that. Some other, you can see this one's uh, using an add uh, blend mode. And uh, that will just consolidate your flare all together. You can do a basic uh, color correction on that final uh, meta strip. So very, very useful technique. Uh, and I want to uh, thank uh, uh, Dave McSween for uh, uh, suggesting that. Very, very good idea. So uh, I will put this up on my website, and if you haven't uh, seen my website, I did uh, list it on my YouTube page, on my Twitter account. Uh, my website is at uh, carlerwin.com, and uh, there's actually two sides to the site. When you go there, there's one for music. I do. Uh, I am a composer. I do write music, so there's a, uh, I have a, a uh, publishing name uh, listed as iScores, a uh, member of uh, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. So some stuff that you might want to look at on there. And uh, then I have a video site that I've uh, tagged all of my uh, Blender uh, stuff onto. And uh, if you click on that site, it will take you to these pages, which have to do with my uh, uh, Blender and GIMP um, creations that I have out there. If you click on the media tab it will take you to a listing of some of my uh, recent tutorials and uh, on this page I will post probably somewhere up here uh, that uh, zip folder for you to download. So uh, uh, those of you who are asking for that uh, starter uh, lens flare element library you can get that again it's nothing to write home about it's not really all that uh, fantastic it's not all that comprehensive either but it it will uh, give you something to start with maybe something uh, to give you some ideas where you can uh, start creating your own elements and also I will have those uh, test blend files in there that you can look at and deconstruct and um, hopefully make some use out of. So um, uh, again, this is Carl Irwin, and uh, hopefully you find uh, some of this stuff useful, and I wish all of you happy blending.